The EFF says that the new leadership that will emerge in the Free State this weekend will take the party to higher heights. The EFF is holding its third Provincial People's Assembly in Bloemfontein. It is the third biggest party in the province, holding four seats in the Free State Legislature. To discuss, we're joined by the University of the Free State's political analyst, Dr. Setulejo Matebesi. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Can you first remind us what happened during the local government election? The Free State, which was this bastion of support for the ANC, we know that the party slipped below 50% in some municipalities. How did the EFF do in all of that? No, we, we, we should perhaps, good evening and good evening to South Africans, we should perhaps go slightly further than the 2019 elections uh, where uh, you would have seen that the EFF in the pro province has actually gained more than 4% in, in terms of electoral support. Uh, and, and the African National Congress in the Free State is the second strongest province, not in terms of the number of delegates that it's going to its elective conference, but in terms of electoral strength. But for the very first time also what happened in KZN, the ANC got below 50%. And, and this is indicative perhaps also of the pressure of the opposition, opposition parties like the EFF. The EFF uh, still doing well, but I mean, if you look at generally, it seems as if, if there is a slight increase, it will be roughly around about 3%. And, and one is wondering what is going to, to happen in 2024, whether the AEA, EFF will be able to exploit uh, or make uh, the wow of the opportunities that is prevailing themselves in terms of enhancing service delivery in this particular province of the Free State. Well, you would think because service delivery has been so dire in the Free State and the claims of corruption have been so rife that opposition parties can do well. Um, so, so is the EFF being, being noticed? What does it have to do to improve its prospects ahead of the, the elections in 2024? I, I have been uh, privy to many elections as a commentator here in the Free State, but sometimes based in Timberley. And, and, and since 2009, what I've realised what the ANC is doing extremely well, despite all the challenges that the ANC is, that it is facing. One thing that the ANC does quite well, which I strongly believe that other, especially the opposition, still needs to learn, is that they penetrate rural areas, your farms, and all that, and, and they will wait up until the last vote has been cast. The ANC will send out food soldiers, and these are the kind of things that parties need to start doing. Spending money on rallies is one thing, but you can't want to emulate or copy what the ANC has been doing for, for many years. And in actual fact, it is a lot of money spending money on all these rallies and all that. Uh, parties like the EFF need to have foot soldiers in each and every corner of the free state to garner support for the party if they really want to make inroads uh, here in the free state. Because for me, that has been one major weakness, not only of the EFS, but of many yeah. other opposition okay. parties who would like to challenge the dominance of the African National Congress here in the free state. Uh, and then you need a strong base. The EFF is saying it had 25 thousand members. I think that was 2018. It's gunning for 55,000 by December. So a more than doubling. Is that possible? Well, it, it, it's possible. I, I, I saw during uh, day and night, uh, year birthdays uh, recently, the support that they gonna filling up stadiums. And what really surprises me, and I think this is something that the EFF uh, is doing quite well, is that they spend almost two months preparing for that event. Uh, unlike in the past where two weeks before a major event, uh, even the public, you should not be an EFF member to know that something happens here in Bloemfontein and in some of the regions of the Free State, uh, you know, billboards were up and all that. There was a buzz about that particular event. And these are the kind of things that the EFF has to do, but they need to do that very consistently because that's the problem with our political party. Some of them seems to only smell the coffee. 
uh, two or three months before any elections and politics and garnering support is not only about elections. There should be consistent engagement with potential voters to indicate that they can offer uh, better opportunities for free status and for South Africa in general. All right, so are there strong leaders in the ranks? And I think we are so focused, Doctor, on, on the ANC heading into the conference in December. We've seen the divisions, uh, we've seen the nuances in different provinces. How would you say the EFF is gelling uh, together in uh, the free states? Or is it a united party? Are there, there strong leaders who can take it forward as well? Yes, I mean, you've got the uh, provincial chairperson, Mayor Mandisa uh, Meteseni, who have been around for some time, uh, very experienced leader, and Sipati uh, party, Namani, uh, you know, and, and even in Tate Simanga, you know, uh, those have been leaders who have been around within the EFF. I haven't seen any public spats. And, and within any organization, from time to time, there will be contestation, especially this time. But what the EFF have been doing quite well with all their provincial elective conferences, we haven't seen these infightings, unlike in other regions, yes, that are where some provinces where there was, but definitely not the free state. I've always seen a united force here in the free state, and I think that bodes well for the party in the free state. But as I've indicated, uh, internal uh, unity uh, for that to translate into amazing, much more uh, electoral support, it simply means that they will need to ensure that mm. they do get the foot soldiers that will uh, attract uh, uh, voters to, to, uh, uh, to the party. But also the EFF should start demonstrating uh, their strength in municipalities. Rather than just taking a radical stance, the EFF should start demonstrating what do, can they offer. And there should be tangible things uh, that are realistic. And I don't say their uh, policies are not realistic. And I think to a certain extent, maybe there might be some uh, free staters that would want to align themselves with the EFF. Final question for you, Doctor. How's the EFF looking overall? We're going to hear from the party leader, Julius Malema. And the, the party is still taking opportunities, for example, disrupting parliament. It recently held up placards. But does it have a clear strategy going into the next election? From my perspective, the party seems a little bit unsure on immigration. Uh, we're seeing lots of parties being uh, populist, you could say, if you want to criticise them. Uh, the EFF has been checking on restaurants, who's being, um, who, if, if migrants are being employed or not. But it's also saying, let's be kind to our African brothers and sisters. And it's very anti-xenophobia. Is it finding a clear path, a clear strategy that people understand? Yeah, it's going to be very difficult to, to try to answer that question. But uh, if I can just come in there, what I do understand what the EFF is trying to do, uh, that is their approach, uh, uh, very radical, uh, confrontational, and almost like a, a don't care attitude towards certain issues that maybe other parties do not want to ventilate. Uh, but one should be careful because in the eye of your middle class, and perhaps it's not a party that will want to garner some votes from the middle class, uh, because for me, it's, it's, it's to what extent does this radical approach enhances the image of the, the, the party. I think the EFF have done enough in, attractive, in attracting the marginalized South Africans, but there is a possibility, the potential, just to go beyond that. But I mean, there are approach sometimes where you ask that uh, when it comes to debate, uh, uh, is it a question of you need to be disrupted uh, to set across your, your point. These are the kind of things that one will have to ask. I mean, the issue of land it is an issue, although there are certain sectors of South Africa who will not want to hear about that. Land is everything. I do concur there with the EFF, uh, but their approach in Parliament sometimes begs a lot of questions. And, and I think perhaps this image of the EFF is affected 
attacking them. Uh, but some within the, Afri the EFF would say, but this is the EFF that we know. They can't change on that. And on the issue of migrants and all that, I think there, yes, it, it's true to protect uh, any citizen, uh, whether foreign uh, nationals or, or, or South Africans. But also, at the end of the day, uh, I strongly believe the narrative that the EFF is peddling uh, with that particular approach, it is a narrative ped that uh, they are very protective of their African brothers and sisters. And remember, most of these migrants or African foreigners, are some of them are permanent residents and they do have voting rights in South Africa. And perhaps that is also the strategy to try and attract uh, voters from that particular sector of our society. All right, we appreciate your analysis, uh, Professor Setulejo Mate Matebesi uh, from the University of the Free State, looking at that EFF leadership race this weekend.